On October 14, 1962, an American U-2 spy plane captured pictures of Soviet Union medium and intermediate range nuclear missiles stationed in Cuba, ruled by Fidel Castro, beginning what would come to be known as the Cuban Missile Crisis, an event that was influenced, though not drastically, by my grandfather. At the time of the crisis, my grandfather, Lieutenant Commander Charles Darrell, was currently stationed on the USS Abraham Lincoln, the fourth Polaris nuclear submarine to hit the seas. President Kennedy addressed the nation, telling the people about the dangers the nation faced. I knew when we heard that, that we would immediately be going out <coughs> to sea. As they were currently docked in the Scottish Holy Lock for war trials, the ship had to be refitted with real nuclear warheads, topped off with fuel, and piloted out into open water. Normally, this task takes about 24 hours. That night, the crew of the Abraham Lincoln did it in 12. The USS Abraham Lincoln was a Polaris submarine. And I was on one, the fourth one, and we went to sea on trials in January of 1960, once in the patrol in 61. President Kennedy had ordered a military quarantine of Cuba, which means nothing gets in or out. This was made up of submarines, destroyers, cruisers, and carriers that literally cut off Cuba from the rest of the world. However, the USS Abraham Lincoln was not part of this blockade. In the event of nuclear war, planes and subs were assigned to contingency targets as to minimize damage. My grandfather explains, We picked up what were called contingency targets. Anything that was a target was listed in a massive book assigned to all the alert airplanes and the ships and whoever had nuclear weapons to be hit during a mutual, mutual assured destruction exchange. But it's something a lot less than total nuclear war was alert. Um, that people well, having contingency targets, which are usually airplanes, but now is also us, could be assigned to go hit some counter force target, uh, to hit whatever. We could be, we could be we had some contingency targets assigned. In fact, one of the damn things was so deep in the Soviet Union we would have had to sail up a Norwegian fjord to hit it. This event was truly re reaching crisis levels. One slip and life as we knew it would end. Negotiations with the Soviet Union were underway, but no one was going to let their guard down as long as there was still a possibility of war. In the end, the only way to convince the Soviets to give up their close-range missiles was to give up our own. A deal was struck with the Soviet Union leaders that we would re remove some of our own close-range nuclear warheads that we had positioned in Turkey to strike quickly at the Soviet Union. Strangely, not even officers directly involved in the operation knew about the missiles in Turkey, even after the crisis was over. Kennedy had to withdraw them in secret as to not appear weak and submissive to the American people.